Rebecca Campbell, welcome to Lips Energy. I'm super happy to have you here again. Thank you so much. I love our chats. <laughs> we are here today because of uh, the recent book that you have uh, launched. I want to show this to all the viewers. It's called Stjärn Själ in Swedish and in English it's Letters to a star seed. Hmm. Yeah. This is your latest book. I know that you have just also launched an oracle card, the Rose Oracle. Yeah, right? the Rose Oracle. That's yeah. it here. It's just really pretty. Yeah. So I um I I wrote letters to a star seed um just before the rose, but they were kind of overlapping a little bit. And mm. and it's interesting because I think that the book Letters to a Star Seed sounds very like um, very cosmic and very kind of out there, um, which it is because it does address like one of the greatest mis mysteries that I think exist, which is who are we? What is the soul? Where were we before? Where will we go after we take our last breath? Yeah. But it was interesting when when um, I was invited to write it. Um, I was being, re it was during the beginning of COVID actually, um, and I'd just become a mum myself and so had really like experienced like giving birth to my son, which is very physical, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> and being, least. Yeah, exactly. And being a mum and, you know, all of that. Um, and I'd moved to Glastonbury and so I'd been really called deep, deep into the earth and I'd begun studying and working more, um, uh, spending a lot of time working with plants and I mean, flowers had always been like, and trees had been a big part of, like I always say, like that's, they're my main muses. That's where I do most of my writing. Um, and then I was asked to write this book, which I had actually pitched to um, Hay House, my publisher in the UK, many 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 years ago like straight after writing my first book um light is the new black it's called in english <laughs> and <laughs> so it was straight after writing that book um that i got the plan and outline for letters to a star seed and so it felt quite odd that i was to be asked at that stage um because i was like but i'm being really called to work with the earth and so it feels actually quite opposite or like is it the right time and i kept on praying and praying and praying and it was just like yes 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 you need to write this and it was actually really interesting because what ended up happening like had i written it six years ago when it first came in um, there would have been like a key thread that was missing. And so what it really is doing, it's it's speaking to those of us who are, I call star seeds, but I see a star seed as someone who is um, aware of the fact that we are souls having a human experience and that it's very likely that we have had experiences elsewhere than just here in this life. Um, and so, yeah, and so the letters to a star seed concept is really about um, in these extreme changing times, um, what do star seeds need to hear and remember? And I really kept on getting for myself and then for, for, for so many others as well, the importance of really seeding ourselves here and remembering that like we are nature and that like our our flesh and our bones we know from a scientific level are made of star stuff exploded stars it literally is like the cosmos mm -hmm. is like the earth is part of the cosmos you know mm -hmm. um as well as connecting in with that ancient part of our soul so yeah it and so, yeah, the rose and the, the star seed kind of really were woven together. And yeah, it, it was really lovely to, to see that. Wonderful. So let's talk about star seed because you just uh, kind of uh, um, uh, gave us the definition of it. But also, I know, I know that you have made your journey by writing this book and before writing this book, um, because it has to do with origin, right? Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. what would you say what is this book what message do you want to send um 
And how is it different to the other two books that you've written? Because you've also written <laughs> this one. <laughs> well, yeah, so Rise, Sister, Rise is really remembering our cyclic true nature. It's about um, allowing the the sacred feminine that exists within all of us, it's not just women, um, to rise. You know, it's, it's really... Um, you know, we're aware that we've been living in a patriarchal world, colonial world even, and it's really particularly, particularly it looks at like um, there's, a, there's a part in there, um, a, a very, very long chapter which looks at the, the history, particularly in Europe of like the burning times and the witches and the wise ones and the persecution that happened as a result of... Um, the the goddess and and when i say the goddess i mean yeah gods and goddesses um but also just earth worship um and us as sacred um so that's really what that that second book um looks at and the first yeah, one my sister race yes mm -hmm. and then the first one which in english is like is a new black um looks at really um connecting in with the calls of our soul so you could say soul mission and it does definitely do that but all through the book is this reminder that we're ever changing and our soul's always calling so you know it's never too late and there's there's not a right or wrong way to do it but it's about connecting in with the calls of our soul and letting that guide us mm -hmm. and then let it let us to a star seed um really invites us to connect in with the wisdom of our soul and remember why we came, remember why we're here now, and to really call all of our soul all the way in mm -hmm. from our, our fingertips to our toes. You know, I think it does address the, the tendency uh, of those of us who are spiritual to, um, you know, maybe feel like being human can be challenging um, and that perhaps we might just want to go and meditate and want to want to go on the side to, to, to be in the spiritual because the physical can be really painful. And so it really is an invitation to bring the soul more fully in to like properly be here now. Um, you know, as Ramdas, his, his whole work was really about that. Um, and so it's it's definitely calling the soul more fully in, but also returning to the earth. Mm -hmm. So um, I think for many of us, particularly who are connected with the call of our soul, maybe something's happened to us through our life that has made us, um, uh, you know, we've had our cracking open or our dark night of the soul, and you know, things can never be the same as they as they once were. So Letters to a Star Seed is really, you know, it's the first bit, there is a lot of like information, like about um, connecting into the book of your soul, the history of your soul, Akashic Records and all of that. But a lot of the, the messages after that are really encouragements, manifestos, um, invitations for us to really embody all of who we are. Yeah. You talk a lot about the cosmic roots and uh, stardust and um, yeah, our connection to to the rest of the universe that is beyond Earth, Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I believe that um, we, maybe not all of us, I don't know this for sure, but my personal belief is that we, all have had some experiences elsewhere than here. Um, I believe that I've, I've had experiences myself. I, I wrote about this in my first book and then also in Letters to a Starseed where I've had memories of times before this, um, you know, moments before incarnating, moments before choosing um, the life for the parents, the, the, the family, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and so it kind of looks at that as a huge mystery um, and is is like inviting us to to be open to remembering what our soul is ready to remember. What do you 
Uh, so that's uh, one thing of, uh, of looking at where you are today and the origin. What about past lives? Is that something that, well, it's not something that really we go into in this book, uh, right? But uh, there's a little bit it? about it because yeah. it goes into the Akashic records, which is where we yeah. can access that. Um, but the way I see past lives are, so our soul um, carries with it um, imprints and memories, right? We don't remember all of it, um, but I believe that we carry with us like the gifts and the lessons and and, and all of that, um, good and bad, <laughs> like as in like if we had a hard time with something, we might find that we've got a, a like, you know, a little bit of a, a thing around there from at a soul level. Um, but then I do believe that many of us have had experiences elsewhere. Like if you look at how tiny Earth is compared to the rest of the knowable universe, and that's just a speck compared to the unknowable universe, to me it just makes no sense that we wouldn't have experienced more than just this. Yeah. 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 I totally uh, agree with you. And uh, I also sometimes talk to other people about so it would be so strange if we on earth in this in extremely big um endless universe were the only smart <laughs> creatures <laughs> mm -hmm. centered around um the earth right well one day we'll we'll know more <laughs> I think I think we will too. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So what what do you think is your next step after I mean looking at when we talk now um I have a feeling of some kind of chronic um, timeline. So if we look at uh, the letters to Starcy that's kind of uh, the start, the beginning of, uh, of, of your book line, so to say. Mm -hmm. And then we come into uh, Light is the New Black, Black, where you actually kind of connect to your soul mm -hmm. uh, during birth, more or less. So mm -hmm. in this um, um, part of life, um, you actually you have your soul you choose your parents you come into this earth and you can remember you can mm. you can actually find back to your soul and then mm. we have the feminine uh, the the rise sister rise in sweden it's called feminine power mm. feminine, mm. which is now kind of it's it's modern times so to say so if if we look at this timeline where are you going next? Are you going back or are you going well, forward? It's interesting because um, I think that there's this, I, and I can read it if you want. Um, okay. There, There's a, the opening, this is the opening um, prayer chapter poem um, of Letters to a Star Seed. And I think this kind of gives away where I'm going next. So shall I read it? Yes, please do. <laughs> okay, cool. So it says, the moment of your birth. Before you were born, your soul consulted with the cosmos to arrange the details of your return. The location and conditions were carefully orchestrated and seeded as you crossed the threshold of the in-between, the watery world of the mother. There you waited in the fertile void as all of the stars and the planets in the knowable and unknowable cosmos moved into place. When the alignment was just right, a portal opened and you were crowned upon your entrance to the world. A soul embodied, spirit planted, eternal woven into matter, heaven and earth combined. Your cells, your flesh, your bones, your eyes, all made up of ancient exploding stars. The universe magnificently ordered as the cosmos, your basic existence is enough to blow anyone's mind. How did you get here and why did you choose to come? Somehow the cosmic curtains parted for the great dance of your life to begin. This is that life and you are that dancer. It took a lot for you to be here now, to be planted here now. 
and what a time you chose to come. So I feel like with this book, it it both um, reaches for the kind of um, call of the soul, um, people with a collective mission, particularly that were in, well, it's in both of the other two books, but particularly Light is a New Black. But then it also like merges with the earth is sacred. Um, and I think that for many people on a spiritual path, not all, but particularly those of us in the West who have been, who've had our indigenous roots severed, as in the reverence, seeing the earth is sacred. Like we're, we're, it's like we're back at school relearning that. But if we reach all the way back, um, that was how everyone lived. And so what I kind of feel is happening and I'm, I'm working on um, this year, I'm working on the Inner Temple Mystery School, which works with different the different mysteries which um, are rooted in nature. So it's water, the sacred rose, um, they're like trees and wildflowers and lots of different ones, including the starseed mysteries. Um, as a gateway for mystics to experience and remember and call in the wisdom of their ancestry and also the soul. Mm -hmm. And so when, before I started writing this book, I, it, and this was like just before I had my son. So it was like when I was pregnant and then straight after I, and it was the beginning of COVID, I began writing a book, which the title is returning, returning to the earth, ourselves and each other. And I've written so much on that, but I'm not clear what the book is not ready. And I think I may end up rewriting the whole thing, <laughs> but I've got lots and lots and lots of words. And a lot of them ended up in here and some of them didn't, but the premise of that book, which is woven in here as well, but I think it's also where I'm going next is really it being about how can we weave the sacred back into our everyday lives? Yeah. How can we see the sacred seeded in everything? So in Letters to a Star Seed, there's a lot of like poetic um, um, connections from the stars to the seeds. And, you know, the seeds come in with everything that they need within themselves to grow into, for example, a future rose garden or forest or whatever. And that we too at soul level and physical level are just like seeds. And to me, a star seed is a soul that is aware that it's a soul. Yeah. When I first heard the the concept of starseed, it was um, it was a, a few years before I wrote my first book, and I remember when I heard what the concept was and this this possibility that we've had experiences in different places, and I started learning about different planets and galaxies and star systems and all of that, and I started geeking out a, around it, um, and also just felt so witnessed and seen and. Like there was there was a real coming home because I'd always felt this disconnection with being here mm -hmm. since um, and through particularly writing letters to a star seed I've I've seen that there is like two parts to that there is the ancient soul within us that has had experiences elsewhere and maybe longs for different times and experiences and places and all of that. And then there is the 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 more ancestral piece where, say, for me, I I, I grew up in Australia. I was born in Australia, um, which was not the land of my ancient ancestors. Um, and I now actually live m closer to my ancestry and I actually have um, uh, like Nordic ancestry and Swedish ancestry. And yeah, so there's that as well. But a lot of it is in like Scotland and Ireland too. Um, and that part of me, and I've seen it in so many others as well. It was this disconnection from the land and the earth and the ancestors like that had been severed. And so it's like there's two things happening at the same time that are actually quite similar. 
Yeah. And I think that's what Letters to a Starseed is really doing. It's inviting the soul part of us that might feel that longing for someplace else because we are living in a time where it's like great division, great polarity, and it's also a time that has been prophesied. So we've clearly chosen to come here for some reason <laughs> and to properly call this part of us all the way in and to acknowledge that maybe ancestral part of us or physical part of us that is longing and feeling like, like, I don't know if I fit in, like where, you know, to properly be here as well. And so the two can properly merge. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we're just, because what I had really noticed was both in myself and in others, this concept of like having our awakenings and obviously the awakening process never ends, but we'll have these amazing experiences and then we're wanting to have more and more and more of them. But it's almost like a whole new world is created when we have these awakening experiences. Mm -hmm. And then it doesn't quite fit with the previous world that we had before. Mm -hmm. um, and we're meant to grow and change, absolutely. But I saw this split in people where it'd be like, I'm gonna go and be spiritual now and then I'm going to go and get grounded now as if they're two separate things. <laughs> Whereas if this, if we remember that the sacred is in everything, then there's no split needed. That's and I think there's, there seems to be something in that with um, the split of the, the feminine and the masculine, mm -hmm. you know, um, that I think that like, again, it's not a, a, a man, woman, gender thing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's <laughs> they're the kind of concepts I'm exploring at the moment. <laughs> and, and I think that you're exploring it in a very nice way because it, when talking to you, you, you have a clear idea of what you are, of what you see, you, mm -hmm. you know, what is what and where, how all the threads come together. Mm -hmm. uh, but for many of us, it, it's not so clear so thank you for making it clearer <laughs> for us <laughs> but also I want to say uh, there is there are a few kind of how do you say movements or something um, in Sweden and probably uh, in many countries right now uh, with a spiritual young population that are starting to find their way uh, and accepting that it's okay to be spiritual and also because it's you know especially in Sweden it's been kind of non-acceptable uh, for a long time but right now I think that it's actually growing the acceptance of, of mm -hmm. people being more spiritual and it's funny because there are a few different or actually quite a few uh, different pods and uh, podcasts Mm -hmm. um with the spiritual uh, focus and there are, and i listen to to them quite often and this star seed when i saw that you came with a book with uh, that title i at the same time i listened to this podcast and the two young girls around 30 ish they were talking about this um term and they were so happy to have found mm. this term because when they realized what, what, what it was, what it meant, they came home. They, mm. found, they found a good uh, explanation to their uh, questions, so to say. Mm. And it's, uh, I think it's, it helps. So it's interesting to hear that you had your first um, contact with starseed as a as a how do you say a term or a mm, word yeah, concept yeah concept exactly mm. uh, a few years before you wrote your first book mm. that's that was also very very deep and soulful mm. and then so how where did you come in contact with starseed so as a concept i began um i did a training in the akashic records and yeah, I wanted to learn like an intuitive process. And so, and I was fascinated by the Akashic records, but then I saw that it also touched on 
not just like past lifetimes and things like that, but um, past incarnations elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and in this course, they spoke a, about it as, um, I'm trying to remember the, the term, soul origin, I think they used, um, with, the, with the concept of where is your soul from? What is your soul's home? And like that deeply, deeply spoke to me. And I, I, I learned about various different ones that, like, you know, from Pallades to Sirius to Mintaka. Mintaka was, was where I, I felt very connected to. Um, and yeah. And then for a few, for, for probably like six years after that, like the first two years, I was just all in. I was doing soul blueprint reports for people. I was, um, I was doing soul readings all the time. Um, I created my discover your, your cosmic blueprint course, which was like literally like creating your, the book of your soul. Um, so he's fascinated by that. Um, but then something started dropping in where, you know, cause I, I was describing the term star seed and then I, I did, I've got an, my second Oracle deck was titled star seed. And as I explored that, I was like, ah, oh, two things. One, I don't know how helpful it is for us to just look to the stars as in, I wish I was someplace else. <laughs> it's not that helpful. I mean, it is if you've had that longing um, to acknowledge it, but then the invitation shouldn't be to, to, to jump out, you know, it should be to, to jump in. And that's what, what's, that's the flip that this book is doing. Yeah. Um, because a lot of the channel material I'd found on Starseed was looking elsewhere and longing elsewhere, which I think speaks to something that many of us feel but it's 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 not helpful for us to continue that. We need to find ways to 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 fully be here because we're here. We chose to be here. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other bit that um, you know, it took a lot of grappling for me to feel into the the mystery behind it all. Of like, hang on, you know, I'm I w was born in Australia. I now I've lived in London for like 15 years and now I live in Glastonbury. Now each of those places has have have imprinted on me. They've changed me, you know, like my friends in Australia say that my accent's funny now. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and um living in London like there was a, it that really gave me a different experience now to living in Glastonbury, the spirits of the land, the like so many people have come here on pilgrimage for so long, I walk to the well every day that has changed me as a person. And I started inquiring in and working with the Akashic Records myself as to, okay, so at a soul level, how does that work? Because I was like, I don't think it's just one place that we've been, you know, I know that I've been coming to earth for more than one lifetime, more than this one, I have memories of that. So surely, if we've had el experiences elsewhere, it's not just this one place. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was really the shift that um, uh, I think I really needed to to take and that really came through in Letters to a Starseed that, okay, so maybe we've got places that we've experienced more of, just like we've visited, you know, I've spent um, most of my adult life now in the UK compared to if I had have stayed in, in Australia and each of these places imprint us. Um, and so from a soul perspective, like there is different places, for example, where you go to study and learn and grow. Um, there's different places that maybe we choose to continue to return to. Um, uh, perhaps there's places that did exist once and they no longer do through stars exploding and, and the universe changing. Because what we know is that we and everything in life is ever changing. So, yeah, and that's when you go kind of go down the rabbit hole and it's like, whoa. <laughs> um, but I think that this, this whole topic is... Um, it reminds me a little bit of that uh, as above, so below concept that, that many mystics have, have spoken about and it's in many different ancient traditions yeah. where, and it's, it's in the word star seed as well, because it's like from a soul perspective, it's yeah, maybe we are from elsewhere mm -hmm. and, and our, maybe our soul is the seed that has the codes within it that tells us 
and informs us and whispers to us constantly. Mm -hmm. But then also our cells, our bones, our flesh are made of stars. Yeah. So, yeah. And then for for a couple of years, um, when I was living in Primrose Hill, I think it was around the time that I was working on my first Oracle deck, Work work Your Light Oracle, um, I just kept on hearing, seed the light, seed the light. I'm like, what does that mean? (laughs) And I think it is that, you know, and I think that's what this book is encouraging us to do because I think the more that we can invite our soul to be in our bodies, for us to be present here, which doesn't mean we have to go off and do and create and be necessarily. It just means that we need to properly be here. Then perhaps the unique quality that, that us being here on this planet at this time brings, can bring something. Cause I think that what I've noticed with a lot of people who resonate with that concept of star seed, They resonate with this feeling that they've come here for a reason. There is this thing that they need to work out what to do. And it kind of stresses them out to try and work out what it is. And I think that the answer almost always is for them to follow what lights them up to, to just like embody who they are, remember who they are. Um, and to answer the the daily calls of the soul rather than be like, oh my gosh, this is this one thing I have to do, you know? Um, and I think many as well resonate with having this, what I call a double mission. So it's like, we're here individually to grow as souls. And then the other one is a, a collective mission. And that's part of the mystery as well. And I think that whatever is happening on the world right now, I think all of us are in that collective mission and maybe there's different groups of us who are part of a different wave and part of doing a particular thing, you know, perhaps we will never know that, but just like that intelligent pulse that tells flowers when to bloom and the seasons to come and go, the tides, all of that, like there, there is this intelligence in, in all of that, just like that intelligence within the seed tells the seed how to grow and bud and bloom and release its petals and fruit and then flower again, like, you know. But it's easy to not see that. And totally. I, think, yeah, I think that's what you're doing. You're actually putting words into this. Mm. And um, I'm thinking it strikes me now when we speak that uh, when you talk about the collective, the collective purpose, the collective um, it's like a collective uh, mission mission yeah um we've been kind of i mean something in the universe has been shouting to us for two mm. years now Mm-mm. about the collective mission mm-hmm. and perhaps then through the pandemic and now uh, uh, for a week or a few weeks it's been shouting to us again perhaps mm-hmm. 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 through you know, taking care of each other, stand strong and stand in our beliefs and be and choose love. Yeah. In this harsh world. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think about that? I mean, this year has just started, but it's Mm. some pretty major stuff has already shown their faces. What what do you think of all this? Um. I, I feel like there is an intelligence in it, which doesn't mean that, like, I don't mean that in a bypassing way of like, it's not really happening. It's all really, really happening. And I think it's inviting us all to return to our humanity, to return to, you know, to, to properly face the trauma that all of us have in our ancestral lines all of us have it some more so than others and i think that trauma and i'm not a trauma expert but i've been on my own journey with it but i think that we all have varying degrees of it and i do know that often trauma causes our soul to leave our body yeah and I think that 
the invitation is like we're being brought to our knees as a as a as a world and and then the division is so extreme and so heartbreaking that it makes us maybe not want to be here that deeply and so i think for sensitive people heart opened people this is really challenging um and when we are challenged like that we've got a choice to make of will i open my heart to this or will i close it off mm. and it's easier to close your heart off and i think the invitation now is to find a way to let it stretch our hearts mm. you know um how are you doing that i know that you're an empath right yeah so how, how am i doing that so yeah. i've really like a, 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 a personal shift in my life um well, i became a mum through all of this as well so it's kind of i can't work out what is becoming a mum and what is pandemic and what is um one thing is for sure that you know now that the seed <laughs> you know yeah. the, the whole story about the seed it's it has a completely different meaning to you it must have completely completely mm -hmm. and and my like because i'm what am i i'm 40 now so i i had gave birth when i was 38 37 i can't remember sunny's <laughs> over too but anyway so i was i was like I was, you know, compared to say my mom, who was like in her late twenties, like if I had have given birth in my late twenties, it would have been completely different. Right. So I was quite, quite old when I gave birth, um, and had been through like a lot of like awakenings and all that kind of stuff. And especially through writing rise, sister rise and all that, I was really aware of how afraid I was of birth. And, um, you know, I'd always suffered from really bad period pains. There was a lot of stuff I was holding around being a woman is painful. And so preparing for my birth, um, so much stuff came up, so much stuff around like feeling like it, it was just going to be the, the most excruciating thing of my life and it would be a full on trauma and all of that. And so I kind of prayed and I, I ended up um, finding someone who's now a very good friend of mine, Binny, came into my life and her whole work is around um, supporting mothers to give birth so that the children never need to remember because they never forget. Um, and I did so much work in preparing for my birth, which is like not what I had wanted at all. Like it's not <laughs> what I would have chosen, but it just happened to be my path. And um, through all of that, what came as the gift in the end um, was properly feeling the merge of the physical and the cosmos. So the transcendence and the imminence at the same time. And a few years before, during my bhakti yoga training, we'd been chanting for weeks on end. And I had this kind of uh, experience that I'd never had before. It was the first time I'd had anything like this, but it, it was like a trance-like experience where I was taken into the center of the earth, um, into the arms of the mother. So it was all surrounded by water, all the ancient grandmothers of the ancestors were all around. And I saw the souls coming in to the earth with a breath and then whoosh, being released. So it was like life and death in like just a moment. Um, this is kind of like where that energy from what I read before came from. Um, and what I saw was like her kind of like comforting the souls. And it was like my soul, it was my mom's soul. It was like everyone's soul. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't just personal. It felt collective as well as personal. Um, and what I really experienced, which I recognized in myself as well, was this kind of the extremes of being human. So like the bliss and the joy and the sweetness of life, as well as the agony and the pain and the excruciating bits and how actually the two of them 
are actually not so far apart. And I'm not sure if I'm making any sense here. Um, but <laughs> it's a big it, topic. It was a huge topic. And that's really what my birth and becoming a mum and all of that has and and to me it's like it's the stars and the seed combined. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, we're, what we're going through collectively right now is it is both of those things. And, you know, if we can open our hearts through the agony, through the hurt, through the sorrow, through the the horrible things that are happening, maybe then more sweetness can be here. Because if we close them off, we can't experience that. Um, So, yeah. How do you think that we should, I mean, um, strikes me again when speaking to you about this, that to be honest, I am not diving into the Ukraine Russia mm-hmm. thing, and I, I'm wondering why. Because I'm, maybe I'm not. Of course, I'm. I'm listening to what's going on, mm-hmm. but as soon as I see something about it, I turn off. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not sure why, but probably it's because I, I don't have. Uh, the energy to take all that in right now because it's it's horrible mm. right and mm. it's very close to where we are mm. I mean, it's, it's very close and um, i'm thinking the, i'm, I'm not i don't normally this is a new situation so it's not something that i know if i normally would do mm. <laughs> i'm not someone who you know closes the eyes and just pushes things yeah away. but how do you how do you accept or how do you live Mm. in these times so i feel like um so first of all like obviously what is happening is so so huge Mm -hmm. and there are so many things happening around the world all the time as well so it's impossible for us to just be like everything at once Mm -hmm. you know and so i think some kind of practice of like what am I being called to do here? What is my action here? And because in some some cases, like, you know, in a couple of years ago when um, the bushfires were just ravaging all through America and Australia, um, that was so, so huge. People in India, um, you know, Black Lives Matter, all of that. We can't do all of it all of the time (laughs) and still like live our normal lives you know and so i think that prayer is for me the most powerful tool for understanding what we're being called and what causes we're being called to in particular um i think that you know what i'm hearing you say is that like you know, it's, it's quite overwhelming. And it's just like, what, what, what can I do? Mm-hmm. Um, versus like, I don't want to hear about it, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I think it's so, so complex. And, um, but, you know, I think that there can be a lot of external pressure on what we should do and what, but I think we all have a role to play and only we know what our role is. So, for example, I have some friends and one in particular who's just such a beautiful, beautiful artist and, you know, they get feedback sometimes that they should be doing X, Y and Z. Now, I personally think they should be making their art because their art heals, you know, Um There are sometimes for me, some causes in particular where I'm like, okay, I'm called to here. I'm not doing it because I think I should. I'm doing it because I'm led, you know? Um, And I think sometimes these things that are happening around the world and on our doorstep can also be triggering stuff from our own ancestral trauma and history and all of that. And so sometimes the best thing you can do is look after yourself and heal yourself, yeah. you know? So I think it's an impossible question to answer. <laughs> well, but <laughs> it's what so I'm personal is, and collective at the same time. Yeah, definitely. And what I'm hearing you say is also to take this time to actually 
dig in to your to yourself mm -hmm. listen and um, and learn where 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 should you be active what should you do here mm. you and take? then and then also it's like um you know i think a a good principle too is to be like okay cool when when these things are happening elsewhere even i know it's what you're talking about is close but when it feels like we can't do anything to actually help you know other than kind of worry about it or i think an invitation is always like what can i do at my front door like you know okay so so just up the road a couple of blocks away there is a community kitchen there which is for people who are homeless and can't eat so you know if you feel helpless with the big find the little thing to do and it, it's the same thing of like like when we're like what's my sole purpose and mission or whatever like you can't possibly answer that um sometimes you might get a download of what it is but really it's found through the daily action through the daily steps and they're bite size but if you do the bite size ones every single day you're in communion with the soul you're 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 hearing you're being led you're you're really connecting to that intelligent pulse of life that like the site the seed has within it we have that within us and so if we if we think to that like the flower the rose isn't trying to be like the cherry blossom and it's not trying to be like the oak tree it's it's just being the rose you know <laughs> and if the rose is the rose as we walk past if we're slow enough to notice we'll be in awe and we're in awe not because we're different from the rose, but we're like it. You know, just like when we stand under the stars at night or see the sunset, those moments of awe, and I always say beauty and nature are gateways to the soul. Mm -hmm. I think that it, it does that kind of like expanse, like the transcendent and the imminent thing at the same time where we look up to the stars or the sunset or the rose and we're like, whoa and we feel insignificant because it's so incredible and yet we're part of that you know mm. oh <laughs> it's so true but like you say it's also to just for everything that's happening around us <clears throat> once again uh it's always something going on so even if there's something new coming up there are still something some things that have been going on for years and years and years and keep other lives miserable on the other side of the world right so yeah. we should not forget that we are living in turbulent times every day yeah and then it's just like what's the next right thing that i'm being called to do yes <laughs> <laughs> That's what we should focus on. So what do you want to send? What message do you want to send? Or what do you want the readers of Letters to Starseed to take with them? Um, I would say that they're not alone in, in the world or the universe. And that I think the invitation is to call call the soul back here and to to properly notice the sacred that is here like in the trees and the flowers and the stones as well as in each other you said something before that um i think was very true something to actually cling on to and that's you said we chose to be here so uh, when listening to people who who feel that Oh, star seed. Yeah, that's that's what I am. I am a star seed, and that's my origin. And finding um, an explanation of my longing somewhere else, instead thinking that this is the re this is the history. This is the reason I'm here today, and I'm I am here today, and I should remember where I came from to do this job right here, right now, better instead of finding it as an excuse to, yeah, but I'm a star seed. I want to go someplace else. I'm, my, my dreams are to go someplace else. Mm. So finding home here with, with everything, all the, bag the bagage, the luggage, 
finding home here with all that instead of finding reasons to fly off. Totally. And I think, I think a simple way we can do that is by embracing our uniqueness, like embracing and, and revealing to the world who we really are. Mm -hmm. So like those two women you were talking about in the podcast, like they've clearly like found themselves and each other. And then now I'm sure that they're finding many others and many others are finding themselves. And so I think that we can, when we feel most separate and most like we don't belong here and like, what am I doing here? And all of that is when we're trying to be something else than we are. Mm. So that's why like exploring who we are as a soul, exploring and embracing our uniqueness and then revealing that what happens little by little is that people recognize us. And so it, and then it's that mirroring that like makes it easier to be here and feel at home here. Do you think that there, I mean, to me, it was kind of an eye opener when I heard this on the podcast, thinking that, yeah, there is a young, there is a younger than me, at least, uh, kind of um, population that, that wants to find out more about life, about the meaning of life and, you know, the roles we have here. And I think that's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. What do you see in where you live in? And I know that you have connections around the world. What do you see in this? Uh, I think it's a beautiful trend and I hope that it's m massive around the world. What do mm. you think? Yeah, I mean, I see the different generations. Like I, I think I'm, I'm the last generation that grew up without like phones and stuff. Like <laughs> we, we didn't have hair dryers or anything when I was in high school. Um, <laughs> Not even hair dryers. But well, <laughs> maybe they existed we didn't use them oh, yeah. there was no <laughs> hair straighteners and no mobile phones let me just say that um but yeah what what i see in those other generations is that they're getting things so much quicker than us and you know i, I remember when i must have been at school when this came out or maybe it was just after school um oh gosh i forget what the movie was called it was with that US politician about the earth, earth, uh, I forget what it was. Uh, it'll come to me in a sec. But I remember when that came in and then the, the trend of like organic and, um, you know, global warming and all of that started rising up and something came online within me um, and I noticed it in others. What I'm noticing in the other generations is they've come in with that, like as if they already know it. So it feels like these younger generations haven't necessarily, or all of them then haven't had to wake up to it. They've come in with it. So, and I don't know if that's a consciousness thing as in like it's it, because it was already spoken about, um, but, I remember waking up to it and I'm seeing that they're already awake to it. Yeah, and the more of us who are awake and aware and think that it's okay to be um, thinking bigger about mm -hmm. humanity, uh, the more that we speak about it to our kids. Mm. I mean, my kids are not spiritual uh, in the same sense as we are talking about, but at least I'm hoping that I can give them um, some kind of acceptance and uh, a different way of thinking. So mm. that when they meet anyone, they can talk about, they, they don't have to shut the door. Right. Say, you know, shut mm. the door to that kind of conversation. They would rather say, oh, yeah. Yeah, and and think of yeah my my mom she she believes in that stuff too yeah mm -hmm. you can do that too <laughs> <laughs> and she she she's a good person still yeah that's uh, it yeah. Yeah, yeah and I think when when yeah more and more people are being raised to to like care for the earth as well you know like it's not just like about picking up rubbish anymore it's about like 
like properly recognizing and i think this is the next step recognizing the sacred in it all because it's it was our disconnection from seeing the sacred in the water in the trees in the animals in the plant all of that mm -hmm. that has i i believe allowed us to um treat it so badly because we didn't we we weren't reverent to it you know so yeah one one um movie or series on tv that actually brought this up to me quite recently is the outlander have you seen that oh the the scottish series yes oh uh, yeah about being true to nature and mm -hmm. actually being with nature rather than right. on it right. mm, it's beautiful mm. so i think that we have a lot of, of things around us that actually uh, reminds us Totally. If we want to listen and if we want to just uh, and also feel i think that we need to feel in order to remember yeah i do too yeah oh good 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 so in our in our previous chats we never spoke about your um because you're a little bit uh, astrologically interested aren't you yeah i don't i don't read charts for other people but i know i know my chart and people that i know <laughs> <laughs> exactly so uh what are your um your star signs so i'm virgo sun um scorpio rising aries moon and venus in scorpio Mm, what what does that make up of you what's the temple well the virgo is like the archetype of the priestess um so like beauty is really important um you could say perfectionist i'm actually quite messy like my bedroom <laughs> has always been messy but when it comes to like what i create i, I have a real attention to detail like yeah aesthetics is really important to me and like working with altars and things like that. So yeah, so that's the creative side of it. I've got a lot of Libra in my chart as well, which is um, balance and harmony. And it's that beauty kind of element. Mm -hmm. And then Scorpio rising. So Scorpio is like the depths and like intensity and, you know, the mystery. And then my Venus in Scorpio, I, I've been told by anyone who reads me, they're like, oh, that's like you're sent by the goddess if you have venus in scorpio and my, my son has that too so um yeah so that that's definitely a thing and i've i, I know a couple of other teachers that i know um that i actually had been drawn to they've got it as well so i'm like okay <laughs> i know that most of my planets are in the 12th house so that apparently is or if someone's a, a astrologer here, you'll probably I'm probably saying the wrong thing, but people say it's like, oh yeah, you're here, you've got a mission, and you're a teacher, and the mystic arts and all of that. Um, and then Aries Moon, so Aries is quite fiery. It's like um, you know wants to like get it done. So I think that's like my drive. Um, so I'm constantly. Yeah, it's a little bit all over the shop, to be honest, because yeah. Scorpio wants to go deep and Virgo wants it to be perfect. And Aries is like, now, now, now. <laughs> yeah, but it's fun to hear about. I'm, I'm not very knowledgeable in the astrological um, area, but uh, I think it's quite fun to, um, to listen to other people. Our audience, our lovely uh, member audience, uh, they are um, very interested in astrology yeah. mm -hmm. so we like to write out mm -hmm. all the authors signs and stuff like that mm -hmm. so rebecca with all you know look at this look at this oh, they're so beautiful you guys have done such a great job <laughs> you know you are a perfectionist and you are a creator and you are a creative creator um we like to uh, try and do our best to show that in the Swedish versions of yeah, I can see that it's beautiful. Yeah, I love those books. You know, you kind of um, help me out with light is the new back black. So I'm so happy to have your deck of books here with the member uh, with our book club. Thank we also so sell a lot of your cards, all the three of them actually now. Mm -hmm. Amazing. It is.
Mm. So super thank you for thank all. Thank you so much, time. Alexandra. Yeah. I hope you have a lovely day, lovely you week, too. <laughs> and hope to talk to you again. That'll be lovely. All right. See ya. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs>